and gentlemen, welcome back to We Are Not Entertained. I'm the engine Brock Gordon, your reigning, defending B-card heavyweight champion of the world. Joined by the loser, as seen on Saturday's video, Tommy Haley. Tommy, you and Macy will have to decide uh, and figure out who will be challenging me next for my B-card title. How are you doing today, sir? Doing tired. Doing good. A little tired, but hey, we're here. Yeah, it was a very busy day for us here on the Sunday. As well, as both the of day our, of this recording, this will go out on mon- Monday. Both our teams were eliminated from playoff contention, but we'll talk about that more on Big Time Talkers. This yes, but week. I would like to say my team did not get el- eliminated by the Jaguars. You still won your game and got eliminated. I but again, the, this we uh, will, right, but I didn't lose to the Jaguars. Again, we will wait and talk about this more this coming week on BTT. Indeed. Tommy, we have a... Uh, we have more releases. Oh, wow, okay. I thought we were going to get to what we normally started with our shows here and get into we'll the just, We'll stay for that last. Oh, okay. Well, let's go. There, this was a... Remember how last week we said we might stop talking about Brock, wrestling as Brock, much? they are cleaning... Brock, I want to tell you one thing. They are cleaning house in NXT. And, and I mean cleaning house. And just cleaning house, period. So, you know how, like... There was so that Tuesday, New Year's Evil, there was like Braun was like there was an old like the X from the old NXT logo. He kicked that down. Uh, that was more sim. That was a talk about symbolism there, because they are basically cleaning house of any NX of any old NXT, any old black and gold, any old black and gold talent. This isn't the Steelers. This is NXT 1.0. Save it for save it for BTT, sir. Oh, we will know much more in BTT if they actually are. So, WWE has released Danny Birch. Uh, apparently, Danny Birch was helping was a helping coach since being off TV. Uh, Kathy Corino, also known as Allison Danger, has been released. Uh, Timothy Timothy Thatcher. Was also released. That one's a shock. Uh, apparently, he'd been helping coaching uh, off TV. Hideki Suzuki of Diamond Mind has been let go from WWE. I don't remember the last match he had. Don't, so don't know either. Uh, George Carroll, which I believe you said is a referee. George uh, Carroll. George Carroll. Has been let go. Of WWE. No, I, no I do not know who that is. Another one is Scott Armstrong. That's the referee. That is Road Dog's brother. If I am not mistaken. David Kapoor, the former Ra- Rajan Singh. Yep. One of the Singh brothers has been let go from WWE. Uh, no. the This is different. They were already gone. They had already been let go a while ago. This is a different. Oh, a different Rajan A different Singh brother? Yeah. Or whatever. Different Singh? Yeah. Uh, and then another one four days ago. Um, these were back of house cuts. The first one was William Regal. Of WWE, which is which sad. Is, which is sad. It's the the NXT 1.0 is done. Who's gonna yell War Games now? I don't know. But other than that, uh, Road Dog, Jesse James, Road Dog, Jesse James, and then Coach Ace Steel and Ryder Ryan Katz are all gone from NXT. But that wasn't it for the NXT releases. Another one. This Tommy has to scroll down. Oh, twice, twice now. Twice in the span of a year or two. A year, in the span not of, six months maybe. Span of a year. Samoa Joe is released again. He's gone again. This man stood out of a thunderstorm, got released. Then they brought him back for NXT. Did nothing with him. Well, he won the title and then he got hurt. He got hurt. Well, he got hurt. Because he knew the storm that was coming, and he got out of Dodge. But yeah, the second time... Y'all take it easy. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah, we are going to stuff at the end of the month. Yeah, we're going to stuff. Speaking of stuff at the end of the month, a uh, entrance in the Women's Royal Rumble was released, so, Tommy. let's see. Other than that, and, on, a, uh, on a more higher note, we have... Uh, it's the build-up. We are... They are starting to build the road to WrestleMania as they as they speak. Yes. With that, the Royal Rumble. 
Yes. Let's start with the women's one, because a lot of the women's roster is definitely going to be at the Rumble. Uh, it almost has to be, because they don't have that many women they left. They don't have that many women left. But a certain women is returning. Yeah, but there's just one thing about it. She's not from the company. She's from a different one. And holds a title that doesn't belong to WWE. Instead, one of their former rivals. Uh, we are talking... Said person is Mickey James of Impact Wrestling. Hardcore country! Mickey James is back with the company for this pay-per-view. I'm not surprised because Impact has always worked with major companies. New Japan, AEW, now Japan, WWE. New Japan, AEW, I believe ROH during, before it yes. was done. Which I believe... Um, a, or AAA as well. All of the major companies. Which I believe Hard to Kill was over the weekend. Yes, it was. And there was apparently a lot of Ring of Honor talent just, you know, showing up. Which, I mean, they I'm need somewhere supp- to go. I'm not surprised. They need somewhere to go. But. But yeah, WWE has done the one thing that they haven't done. Open a forbidden door. The forbidden door is open. It It is interesting. Uh, I remember seeing that Friday. I was like, excuse me? <coughs> excuse if me, you was... hear us coughing, it's because we both have massive... No, mass... mine's, mine's different. No, oh. Mine is definitely a drainage. What's yours? I don't know. Just coughing. It's not COVID. I'm fine. Uh-huh. I'm fine. Uh-huh. I'm fine. I'm seriously, I'm fine. But yeah, like, it honestly kind of surprised me that's it. Impact Knockouts Women Champion, like Knockouts Champion, Mickey James, is in the Royal Rumble. So it leads to the question, so it's like, okay, they have a women's wrestler in the mat, in the Royal Rumble match for the women's. Who they just released this past year. Indeed. Or past two years. Past two years. This leads to the question, does ROH have a male participant for the Royal Rumble by any chance? I mean, you talked about this off air and have two... Very different answers as to who we think it's going to be. Uh-huh. So, I will let you go first. Uh, mine is, uh, I forgot his name. Rich Swan. Rich Swan. You thought it was Swerve. I don't know why I thought Swerve. I apologize for that. Tommy did a racism, it's fine. I did not do, I did not do a racism. I just, I just said that on accident, because I thought that was his name. It's like Rich Swerve. Kind of sounds like it, right? That, that would be a good... That sounds like an NXT name for him. <laughs> Had he not already been part of WWE, Rich Swerve would have been great, or Robert Duck. Robert Duck? I don't know. Quack, quack, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> quack, 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 quack. You just hear an entire crowd just going, Quack, 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 quack. Be a stupid name, but it would work knowing WWE. Yeah, yeah. They, they would get it over. Yeah, Rich Swerve. I think Rich, Rich Swan. Rich Swan. Did I say Rich Swerve? Yes. I did, didn't I? I didn't realize I did. Rich Swan. Rich Swerve. Rich Swan. It's going to be a running joke now. Rich Swerve. Underdog, put that on a t shirt. Oh. Rich Swerve. That, that, that who I think. I WWE. think we drafted him in that draft that we didn't release. Lost to the sands of time. Oof. Rich Swerve. But yeah, I think... Now Rich... we're just trying to pop ourselves. Yeah, I know. Rich Swan. There you go. Will be the participant for the men's That's who Rumble. you think. That's who I think it is. Brock thinks a different person. Moose. It, it's it's going to be Moose. Because... Big sweetie, big sweaty meaty man. Big meaty man slapping meat. Yeah. I mean, we also found out on SmackDown Friday, this past Friday, mm-hmm. that Roman Reigns has a challenger for his Universal Title, and who else? <laughs> it's Wario. It's CrossFit Jesus. It's Waluigi. My it's bad. Seth. Waluigi. Freaking Rollins. It's They've Waluigi. Been, you know what's funny about this match? They've been teasing it. For about a year now. And yep. they're finally giving it to us. Thank God. Just next up is The Rock. Do it, WWE. You won't, you fucking cowards. They won't. They will. No. They will. 
But if if The Rock shows up at the Rumble, I'm gonna be. I fucking told you so. Oh, that's fine. I'm just very pessimistic at all times of my life. Okay, whatever. All right. But all right, all right, all right. So whatever. it's Seth versus Roman. That's what me and Tommy get to see at the Rumble. Let's go. Guess what else we get to see? Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. Vince is feeling himself. Oh my God, Vince! Vince creamed his pants in creative when they found out they're doing this. Ah, ah, yeah, they're just so big. Yeah, yeah, and they're and they're big and they're men. Yeah, and they're sweaty. Yeah, big meat men slapping meat. Yeah, I just yeah, and we're gonna have we're gonna have Brock go over. Yeah. Yeah, of course yeah. he's going to go over. And he's going to put his foot on his on Bobby Lashley's chest. And then he's going to do the same thing to MVP. Yeah, 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 yeah! Okay, calm down, Vince. Calm down. But yeah, that's, that's some of the announcements made. Oh, apparently Johnny Knoxville is going to be in the Rumble. I don't know if that's true or not. Nope, that's official. That oh, is an official so that is an official thing WWE put out. Johnny Knoxville is in the men's Royal Rumble. That's from their official checkmark Twitter page. I almost don't want to go to the Rumble now. We're going to find. We are going to the Rumble. We are going to the Rumble, Brock. And there is not I mean, I'm driving, so... As much as I don't want to. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. No, Johnny Knoxville isn't going to be in the Rumble. He is going to be in the Rumble. That's not a joke. That's like a dead serious fact. So dumb. So dumb. Comedy, fake, horseshit. We had Drew Carey in the Rumble. What does I know. that mean? That, that my point still stands on that. Although that was like kind of funny because it was like he had a few, like feuding with Kane, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, n- he wasn't feuding with Kane, but he tried to pay Kane off. Or oh, yeah, something like that. There's like some kind of angle with Kane. I don't remember what it was. But, but uh, like, yeah. So that's your WWE. Recap this Your past news week. The week. AEW, I guess. Um, Adam Page won his match against. Apparently, Sammy, Gu- Sammy Guevara is your new interim TNT champion because Cody's Cody, turning into Triple H. I don't know what's happening. Uh, I don't, I don't know either. Jungle Boy and oh yeah, we have new tag team champions. Well, you know, cool. Whatever. Just all kind of come circle. Watch it all come circle back to FTR, and FTR wins. Yeah, exactly. This way, and they just start putting all the goofy tag teams on the shelf. That'd be great. That would kind of be great, but that's not going to happen, sir. And they start as soon as they all get back. They all have no gimmick. They just show up in jeans. FTR or just no, every their other opponents. Tag team? You just see one day. There's no mask on Luchasaurus. He just shows up in jeans with Jungle Boy. They just come Whoa, out wearing that sounds jeans. So cursed. <laughs> that sounds so cursed. We've seen him without all the green shit. They take out uh, the acclaim. They just show up wearing jeans. Everybody just starts wearing jeans. Why? Why jeans, though? Why not? It's the most basic thing that you can wear. Jeans. Okay. Okay. And they're athletic fit, too. I feel like FTR would be the one order jeans. They'd nope. Be like, all right, we can kick every tag team's ass in just athletic fit jeans. No, they would do it wearing like spandex. No. Oh, wait, they already wear. Spandex. Yeah, exactly. In like I don't know in something jogger, in joggers. Uh, maybe, but that's still kind of gimmicky. They would have like they have basically no gimmick other than they just beat the shit. Slacks. Out. They do it in slacks. That would be something. We're going to look good and still whoop your ass, and when we beat you, you have to quit the company? That could be a gimmick right there. Uh, that's something Young Bucks would do. they beat them to that. Nah. And then they beat the Young Bucks. Young Bucks just come out in jeans and say, we have to retire. We broke our backs. We lost our smile. <laughs> T- 
took you a second to get that reference. Yep, it kind of took me a second. You know, just that time. I like this. I, I want this to happen now. Star Fantasy Book and Fantasy Demi. That's they, not happening. They take out way. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. I kind of like 2... I mean, man, not Man of the Year, but I like 2.0 and all that. They start... everyone. Everyone's still a tag team, but they're just wearing jeans. 2.0 is kind of growing on me, though. Yeah. They should! They're really good! 2.0 is good. I like 2.0. Yeah, they're really good. I'm glad you're finally coming around on them. I was like, yeah, they're okay. And now I'm like, yeah, they're actually really decent. Depending on what happened next week, maybe I'll reveal the guys that I've drafted to my AEW roster from their official roster page, and I'll have Tommy do the same. Oh, okay. Depending on what happens this next week. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen this next week. Hopefully nothing. Please be nothing. Or should they be saving the debut for someone? Fuck you. Well, no. Because they're on TBS now. I know. I know. Oh, and I by know. the way, uh, Jade Cargill is the TBS Women's Champion. Eh. Should have been Thunder Rosa. Eh, definitely should have been Thunder Rosa. But or I feel like Ruby Soho. I feel like they're they're saving. Uh, they are. Sorry if you heard that. That's me and Tommy celebrating something. They are. I feel like they're saving her for the main the main title. Maybe. Uh, Hikaru Shida and Serena Deeb are continuing their feud. Uh, okay, Hikaru let's be Shida honest. Let's, they're both is really finally, good. Well, I've known Serena Deeb, but Hikaru Shida has finally grown on me. Um, Dude, it she's took a good. Bit. She's good. Go figure. It took a feud with Serena Deeb, but here we are with her. Yeah. All right, and this has been a quick podcast so far because... There's nothing We really didn't really else. want to talk about the releases. Football. There's also football going on. The, Playoff implication football. Very massive playoff implication football. I mean, I mean, all this will be wrapped up in a bow by the time this podcast goes out tomorrow. But. Big, massive implication. Big, meaty men slapping meat. Kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, that is happening right now. That and is the true. O-line versus D-line stuff. But, yeah. We have a certain... Uh, we actually reviewed something this week. Well, we review something every week. And what we reviewed, we thought was well, the last first... Last week, we didn't do anything. It was last week. It was the Depression Show. I call it the Depression oh, Show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm following now. Because we wanted to take a week off from reviewing stuff. And yeah. I'm following now. Okay. It turned um, in, the Wayne turned into us talking about TV channels. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what got us on that path though, that made us so depressed. I don't remember. But... Well, I can. Hey, we're here check something real quick to see. Yeah, we did review something last week. We reviewed WWE Day 1. We talked about Day 1. We reviewed it. Eh, I didn't watch it. Exactly, not did I. It sucks to know that WWE pay-per-views that they've had, their last most decent one was the Blood Money one. Listen. Which I actually went back and watched that. It was actually pretty somewhat decent. All right. We know that there's. Did a... that suck knowing that? Absolutely. Wait, we we all know here that we have a boycott here at B Card Entertainment on Blood Money. But it was a decent pink review, that's, though. That's that's fine. Anyway, we did review something this week. Uh, Not real this time. Yeah, we thought it was the first ever episode of Superstars. So the first ever episode of Superstars on YouTube. On YouTube. Uh, so we couldn't find the original one. This is from September seventeenth, two thousand and nine. Tommy, how old were you in two thousand at this time in two thousand nine? I was nine years old. I was ten. This show took place at W on WGN America, which is a crazy statement to say out loud. And WGN America. Yeah. Shows like any Law and Order. Um. Well, one second, I can tell you what they had. Okay. Well, let's not go on the tangent that we had last last week. All right, we had to do a little research here because why not? It had such great programming, such as the Bob and Tom Show. Did they have any Law and Orders on WGN? Like they did runs of Law and Order. Yeah, they they did. Of both Law and Order. Salem. Salem. Never heard of that. Outsiders, show. Underground, Bellevue, Pure, Shoot the Messenger. Code 100, Dogs Most Wanted. Dogs? Doug? You mean Doug? Dogs. I thought you mean Doug the Bounty Hunter? Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, 
Toast. Ring Warriors. I don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Sounds like wrestling. Probably. And then they did a lot of news. They are now a news nation, so. I don't know about you, Tommy, but that seems kind of, uh. News kind, nation. Kind of, uh. Political. Nope. We're not getting political. Yeah, on this exactly. One. We don't get political on any podcast we talk about. What are you talking about? That's right, we don't. We definitely don't. Ah! They're, um. Hmm. Fun. Okay, I just looked up what they are. Yeah, are they, we're not diving into it. Are they very uh, certain uh, Republican? No, other way. Really? Yes. For real? Yes. They're CNN? Uh, try farther than CNN. CNN? Farther than CNN. Yeah, CNN. Probably about as reliable as CNN. hey What up? Anyway, Tommy... This was a actually pretty good episode of Superstars. Yeah, I know. Guess what? Guess what started with? Uh, that is, favorite. No, shut, let us get to it. It started with that incredible intro. Oh yeah, the incredible intro and all that. And guess what kicked off? Chris Masters coming out. And guess who he's facing? Yeah, I don't have any notes from this. Santino, match. I don't have anything. Chris Masters won with the mas- master lock. Brock, what did you give this match? Uh, oh, out of five. Sh- Forgot to do that. You forgot to do that? It was that? a very comedy BS match. I gave it a one. That's being generous. I'm giving it a 2.5. and Or a .25. I was about to say, I'm like, no. a two? That's really generous. Uh, a, a .25. It gets that from being a negative from that finish. I give it a allowing, one. Allowing uh, Chris because, Masters to win. Because, because Brock decided to absolutely... Because Brock loves him some Santino. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nami, he loves him some Santino. Next thing that we saw was an ECW Championship recap from Breaking Point. Indeed. And I also forgot how comically large that belt is. Well, let's talk about this recap. It was recapping Christian's match against William Regal at Breaking Point. And tell me if memory serves right, that was probably best match on the show. If I can remember Breaking right. Breaking Point? Yeah. The was, I quit match between Cena yeah, and Orton was good. obviously, but... Of the non gimmick matches. No, if yeah, memory that was serves good. right. That was good. Um, so Christian obviously won that. Christian would hold this title till ECW closes its doors. We already reviewed that show. But not here on Wayne. We reviewed it on an episode of Big Time Talkers. Back when we thought Big Time Talkers was gonna be a, a wrestling, wrestling show. show. Yeah, we did. We? Oh, that was wrong. Boy, oh, well. how times have changed. Yeah, just a bit. I don't even think there really is a th- common thread with anything we do on nope, Big Time Talkers no. anymore. Nope, absolutely not. So, we come back from that. We also have a uh, other Breaking Point recaps. Come back and tell me who's that commentary? <laughs> Zach Ryder. I wanted to stop watching after this point when I see the stupid smug smile. So remember, this is Zack Ryder 2009. This is... No, he's not even at that point yet. But he had the headband and went... Yeah. This is a Jersey Shore ripoff Zack Ryder. Oh, the worst for Zack Ryder. Yeah. And it's not even close. Truly is. Uh, also with him on commentary for the ECW portion of this is our favorite broadcasting duo that WWE had at this time, Josh Matthews and Matt Stryker. Indeed, it was. And if Zack Ryder wasn't there, it probably would have been another great so job good. by them. Yeah. Uh, out Zach first, Ryder had to ruin it with commentary. Just at first, he, he is ass on commentary. Well, yeah, he's not that good. Um. And Tommy, who do we hear come out first? It's... Where my peeps at? It's... It's Christian! It's Christian! It's Christian! He comes out first. He's the current ECW heavyweight champion. Like I said, he will go on to hold that title until the company's demise... Or that brand's demise. Or he would lose it to Ezekiel Jackson. If you want our thoughts on that final episode of ECW... Uh, I watched we, Big Time Talkers, number whatever it was. Yeah, I don't remember which one. And tell me who is his opponent. Some British guy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tommy. You're welcome, citizen. You're doing a great job here. 
You're welcome, Stetson. It's Paul Burchill. Paul Burchill, that's his name. And what was his nickname that he's been given? The Butcher or something like the that? The Ripper. The Ripper. Yeah. Paul the... <laughs> the Ripper Paul Burchill. The Ripper Paul Burchill. Um, this is post him being a pirate on SmackDown. Which is like, I didn't know that until you told me. And that's kind of like, really? Literally a Jack Sparrow clone. A Jack Sparrow clone? You can look it up right now on your phone. Look at a picture of him. Pirate Paul Burchill. I will pause and wait here for Tommy to... Pirate Paul... Burchill. It's, uh... He was oh in a, my god! He was in a video game like that. Oh my god. Yep. Jack Sparrow ripoff. That is a complete Jack Sparrow ripoff. He's got the eyeliner and everything. Yep. Um, so this is after that, but just before or around the same time, he's doing his incest angle with his kayfabe sister. Katie Lee Burchill. Except they're from Britain and not Birmingham, Alabama. Why, but where is she from in London? Or in From London? I probably from, actually London. From from uh, England in Kayfabe? I don't remember. I thought you said Birmingham. I'm pretty Something sure I just like said that. that as a joke. And I was like, ooh, okay. Anyway, uh, nice little match between these two, actually. It was actually a good match. It was decently paced, decent offense by both guys. Uh, these were probably two of the best workers that were in the company at this time, which, given the... Uh, in ECW, you meant. Yes, in ECW. Because in 2009, they still had John Cena, Batista, uh, okay, so, Randall Keith. Oh my god, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know for goddamn fact you did not just say Batista is a better worker than Christian. I mean, or John Cena. I mean, they had Punk. Okay, so Punk. Taker, and, yeah, okay. There's Cena. three. Mm, Cena at this time hadn't gotten to where he would be yet. Randall Keith. I already have him, so that's three. Triple H was still wrestling at this time. Triple H was still okay. wrestling at this time. I'll give you that. Shawn Michaels was still around. Shawn. Regal. Yeah. That's pretty much where it stops. Who else? Ziggler was still too young. Dolph was still on Superstars. Well, he was on SmackDown. He was getting his first title shot, but he wasn't there yet. Um, Morrison. Yeah, I would say he's better. He wasn't there yet. Hell, he never truly got there. Uh, Did they release him or is he still with the company? He got released. John I covered, Morrison? Yeah, I covered that. Oh, that's right. He you. did. Um, that's the one I was going for, right? Yeah. Evan Bourne hadn't been hadn't been on the company much longer. Maybe Shelton Benjamin. Cody. No, he was nowhere near. Cody. He was nowhere near where he was. Dustin. Gold dust. Sorry. Gold uh, dust. Gold not dust. at this time. Gold dust. Not at this time. Gold dust was not good at this time. He was suffering some uh, substance show. abuse. <laughs> Get the hell out of here <laughs> with that one. Jericho. Yeah. Edge was hurt, so we can't say Edge. I think Edge was forced to retire after this year. No, 2011. Oh, was it 2011? Yeah. Because this, this is the leaning into the Rumble that he would win. Ezekiel Jackson. Get, no. <laughs> Rey Mysterio. Rey, yeah, obviously. So, so we've named nine. But T- did you put Batista in? No, get the hell out of here. But Batista was always in the main event scene. Mark Henry. He is not a better worker. Okay, whatever. These are better workers, not bigger stars. Finley. I'll throw Finley, Finley in there. Finley, yeah, I'll, I'll throw, throw Finley, Finley in there. there. But, uh, no. Get the fuck out of here with Big Show, Batista, and Mark Henry. This was 2009. Yeah. Those were your main event players in 2009, by the oh, way. Oh, Mark Henry was not. Kane was. Wait, what was Mark Henry? What was the Hall of Fame? 2011. Was it really 2011? Yeah. Oh, Chavo. I forgot Chavo. Chavo was still the company. Matt Hardy. I don't know if Jeff was still here at this point or not. No, Jeff was there. Because okay. Because this was before this, the, the feud he had with... I don't know. With Punk with the straight edge and all that. I don't know. So. Anyway, point still stands. They were part of the better workers at this time in the company. Um... <laughs> We go to commercial break and we get a don't try this at home ad. 
We've had two of these, by the okay. way. Tommy, if you would, please open up your notes for the help with this. Uh, Paul Birchall starts to brutalize Christian with some cross faces that just look nasty as hell, quite frankly. And... Uh, Tommy, he almost gets caught with what? Can you say that again? What did Paul Birchall almost get caught? The most dangerous move in all of WWE, the surprise roll-up. Even though it was a sunset flip into a roll-up. No, he also hit a... The most dangerous move in all of professional wrestling, the surprise roll-up. He got a 2.9 out of it. He didn't get a three count out of it. He got like a no. two point nine nine yeah. count out of it. Uh Christian wins with kill switch. Or unprettier. Tom, unprettier. I know it is the unprettier. When Christian hits it, it's the kill switch. But, but I know it is the unprettier, because it's basically what it is. It's the same move, but he at this time he called it the kill switch, so I'm gonna call it the kill switch. Uh we come to our main Wait, what'd you get this match? Um three oh. Same. I'm um, same there. Three. It was a good match. Um. What did you give it a three as well? I gave it a three as well. All right. It was ooh, probably best match on the show. I mean, there were only uh, three matches. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there were three matches. Uh. Afterwards, uh, Christian is holding up the title, pointing right at Zack Ryder. Ryder is the number one contender for the ECW Championship after winning a battle royal on ECW. We might review that ECW because. I want to know who was in that battle royal. I want to know who that. If it's on YouTube, I hope. It is. It actually is. You looked it up? I looked it up and I found it. All right, let's put that on the list of what we might but review. We know what we're doing next week. Anyway, our main event of the evening a very young man comes out to ring Tommy and. A young Dolph Ziggler. A young Mr. Perfect. I, mm, a young Billy Gunn. Young Shawn Michaels. A young Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins. He got compared to Shawn Michaels a lot for his look. Kurt Hawkins did? Yeah. Look at uh, old pictures of Kurt Hawkins when he was younger. Uh, a young Edge. A young... Okay, no, stop right there, sir. Well, I'm going with the Kurt Hawkins path. They really call Kurt Edge. Hawkins a young Edge... So we're going to go to Ed. Yeah, he was part of the Edgeheads. <gasps> so a young Zack Ryder. Oh my Ryder. god, he was. A young Zack Ryder. Uh, uh, a, a, a Jesse. A young Jesse from Jesse and Festus. The son of Terry Gordy. Who? Terry Gordy? No. Oh, the Jesse. One before that. Jesse. And who? Festus, a.k.a. Doc Gallows, Luke Gallows, whatever you know him as. Oh, the Good Brothers? But when he first came in and he was... He was Festus? <laughs> we need to watch some Festus stuff, apparently. What? What? That's a topic for a totally different time. Okay. Uh... <laughs> anyway, Ziggler's out here first. And who's on commentary, Tommy? Uh, good old JR. And... I don't know. Todd Gresham. Todd Gresham. He now works for ESPN. What does he do for ESPN now? Uh, stuff. Anchor. And stuff and things. Yeah, stuff and things. So Ziggler's coming out. He has a Intercontinental Championship match against John, John Morrison, Morrison at, at Hell in a Cell Extravaganza, as JR like to call it. Which. Makes makes the question: Why the hell does Jr. Why is he in hell? <laughs> does Jr. Does J, I know I need to get better material. You know, Andre the Giant. You have nuclear heat. We're throwing stuff at you. <laughs> I'm gonna rip the shirt off. I'm gonna rip the shirt off of Hulk Hogan. I don't give a shit. Get the fucking cup out. Get the fucking cup out of here. Hey, that right into the trash. Cool. Anyway, and who faces Dolph Ziggler in this main event matchup, Tommy? Oh, one Irishman named Fit Finley, and I don't think you've ever heard of him. He's like the creator of this match called the Belfast Brawl. 
You know, nothing, nothing we too We need to fancy. review that one with him and JBL where Hornswoggle just gets demolished. He's absolutely fucking... Did, did just just gets brained can. by a trash can. Yeah. That's the greatest WrestleMania moment of all time. Yeah, pretty much. Where he gets fucking absolutely domed by... Where he gets absolutely domed by a trash can. And, like, square on the head, too. Square on the head. Tell me your thoughts on this matchup. It was really good. Yeah. Philly, Philly had a gut and could still kick ass in 2009. Well, you know. All of us with guts can still whip ass. I know. Especially you scrawny bitches. I'm a little hefty. I'm about 185. I'm getting there. I'm getting there about God. 190. The anyway. The chunky side. Uh, commentary puts over how skilled Ziggler was in college. Still holds the pin record at Kent State for most pins in the season. So, which Tommy didn't remember the last I time I brought it up. I always forget that he wrestled for Kent State. Always forget. Which is why when him and uh, Swagger were a tag team together, and I was little and, and in wrestling at the time, I thought that was really cool. Because two guys that wrestled in college were, tag, were in a tag team together. It's just, you know, Vicky Guerrero was their manager. Huh. 2012, man. Weird time. Weird time. Weird time. Anyway, this matchup was really good. It was. It was it was fairly paced for both for both men. And Brock bring out the point of the young Mr. Perfect in him. It which I thought I'm like, no, I see more of the oversell in him. Like now, like the oversell in him. Speaking of which, I believe Dolph Ziggler, I haven't seen him on TV in a while. Uh, tag team with Robert Roode as the Dirty Dogs. They're on Raw. I haven't seen, but I haven't seen them in a while. So well, you don't watch Raw. So. Well, I mean, I don't watch SmackDown either. So that could be why. Anyway, I think they were in a tag team turmoil number one, match. Number one contenders match. Like tag team turmoil. Uh, maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, he showed why there were comparisons to Mister Perfect in this matchup at the time. Well, yes, at this time. Uh, Finley hits a couple of clotheslines for a comeback and then jumps and sits on his chest. About as basic an offensive move as you can get. Just sitting on another man's chest. Ah, uh, yes. Doesn't get doesn't get as simple as doesn't get any more simpler and complicated as that. Just sit on a man. Yeah. That'll work. Edge does I mean, Christian does that thing with the rope. Like, with the ropes, where they put him in the middle rope, and then he just sits, stands on their back with the top, like him. Yeah, that's pretty rudimentary, and there's a, I also love it when, going back to Christian, when they'll be stretched over that middle rope, and he'll jump over them, over the top rope to the floor, and just slap them in the face. It's probably my favorite move that Christian does. It's a good one. Uh, anyway, back to this matchup. Tommy... You were confused by this finish until I told you what happened. I was very confused because I didn't know what the hell happened. So, for the folks at home, would you like to describe it the best you can before I explain it? So, what I saw was is that um, they were in the corner where uh, Finley had his... What is it? Shillelagh. Shillelagh. He yes. put it right there, down there, thinking he could use it. But then when they got to that thing, the ref moved the shillelagh out of the way, thinking it was going to be used as a weapon. Little to my knowledge and the audience's knowledge, Ziggler gave him a little bonk in the eyes and rolled him up for the win. Not a roll-up. Not a roll-up, gave him a zigzag. Stupidest name for... It's a stupid finisher name. And it's a stupid finish, too. But, yeah, he uh, raked the eyes... Hit him with a zigzag. Finley was in control in the corner. Hit him with a shoulder tackle, uh, which moved the shillelagh out to the referee's field of vision. He went to go move it. Referee's back his turn. Rick of the eyes. Zigzag. Ziggler picks up the win, and that's the show. Zip. I was like, what the hell just happened? And then I saw him replay. I'm like, okay, that's what happened. All right, cool. Tell me, what do you give this matchup? I gave it a good 2.75. Hmm. A little bit higher than what I'm going for. Going with the 2.5. It's a good match, but wasn't anything too spectacular. So, so. I mean, yeah, that was it. Nothing too special. But that will do it for 
this week of We Are Not Entertained. It's kind of a light week, don't you think? <laughs> there was lots of news, but we just breezed right through it. Yeah, I kind of want to get over with. Kind of watch football all yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, next week we'll be re- reviewing the September 24th episode of Superstars from 2009. I think from now on we're just going to kind of go... Go from Superstar to Superstar? Every week that's available on WWE's YouTube account and just review them from there. So we kind of know what's going on in WWE at the time. Yeah, no, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, by the way, Roll Tide, because this will go out on Monday. National Championship is Monday today. Go dogs, Go dogs. even though we both We picked- both picked Alabama! Yeah, I know. Macy was the only one that picked Georgia. She's crazy. Yeah. Bama's going to win their seventh national championship since 2009. They're not as good as uh, North Dakota State. No, no, they are not. They, North Dakota State is the chads of college football. Alabama are the betas. We will talk about that more on Wayne. Indeed, we will. Or on BTT. This, this is, is Wayne. This is Wayne. But this has been an addition of Wayne. Rock, let's do the plugs. All right, so... Uh, this past week, me and Macy were unable to record an episode of the Sheer Shit Podcast. Some uh, unfortunate and unforeseen circumstances came up, which prevented our schedule from working together to record the podcast this week. We should have an episode out this week, and possibly an explanation as to why we were unable to record it. Uh, Big Time Talkers is coming out this... or Big Time Talkers this past week. Tell me what was our top five. Uh, our top five... Past weekend was Pokemon. This time we decided to do Audible and decided to do video games. Yes, so it's our top five favorite video games. It'll also be our end of the year NFL awards. Yes, that was... Hold on. I will announce this. So, I forgot to mention at the end of the podcast when I did all the playoff stuff that we are doing our picks for the end of season awards. So, like, MVP, MVP, most improved player, coach of the year, offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, defense and defensive player of the year. So we will be doing that, as well as wrapping up and seeing the full playoff picture unfold. As right now, yeah. Yes. We have a lot to talk about. Yes, we have a very, it's going to be a lot of football next week. Well, next week. per usual. Lots of football. And we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do after... Uh, football starts to wind down. What kind of like start you know, doing. like the end of Ricky Bobby, like when Ricky Bobby won, like did that race. He's like, I, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do without football. Uh, probably review uh, documentaries and such. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I mean, it sounds about right for us. But that is That's it. Big time talkers, go ahead and follow us on Twitter at bcardyt. Tommy, your Twitter handle is it is dude underscore rex fourteen. The D and the R are capitalized, by the way. And I am Brock Gordon ninety nine. Only the B is capitalized in that one. So until big time talkers, I've been Brock Gordon. I've been Tommy Haley. And until Wednesday, we'll see you all next time. R.I.P. Bob Saget. That's true. We will talk about that on BTT.